All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's town hall. Our topic for tonight is the effects of the shutdown on small businesses. We are so happy to have Jan Lancaster, owner and mama of the Bistro in Bloomington with us tonight. If there are any other small business owners who are here in the Zoom or watching us on Facebook Live and want to share um, your experience, you can absolutely leave us a comment on the Facebook Live or chat in the Zoom chat box as well to share your experience. We do want to hear from you. So tonight, again, I am super excited to introduce you to Carla Bailey-Smith, who is running for District 88 State Representative. Carla, thanks for hosting this town hall tonight. And thank you, Kelsey. Um, so thank you to everyone who's tuning in now or watching later on YouTube. I am so honored to have Jan Lancaster join us tonight, our mama of the bistro. For those who don't know, the Bistro is our gay bar in Bloomington, and it is a place that welcomes everyone, um, a place of joy and fun and community, and a place that many of us gather for celebrations. Um, so my first question, Jan, is when did you open the Bistro, and what made you decide to open a gay bar in Bloomington? Well, um, we officially used the year 1993, July of 1993, um, I was here a little bit before that, but uh, it, we were kind of in a transitional period. This, it was opened as a gay bar before I had it, and it was probably opened about six months before I started the process of purchasing it, but we were working it, et cetera. Um, at that time in my life, uh, I was spending a lot of time downtown. There was a lot of bars and live music. Uh, that was kind of what I was interested in. Mm -hmm. And we had heard that, you know, a bar was going to open up the street and everyone was curious about it. And um, we just happened to go up one night and I walked in and realized that, you know, there's no TV here and people are actually sitting and talking to each other. And uh, this is just great. And so we started coming more and more often. And um, after probably a month or so, the owner said, you know, everybody loves you. You should just buy this place. And I said, I, you know, I don't have any experience and whatever. And um, anyway, we, the talks continued and then finally I bought it. And honestly, um, you know, I knew it was a gay bar. I, you know, it, that just didn't phase me. I um, just, really enjoyed um, meeting new people. And mm -hmm. uh, I just felt that this is something that um, for some reason that I was meant to do. And so um, the process to try to get it purchased was, was a long, tough process, but we made it. And um, we, that's why we use the official date of July of 1993. So almost okay. 30, almost 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so, wow, 30 years. Um, so, uh, now this, to me, this is, this is, um, I mean, I know it's not a, a, on a corner, but it, to me, it's a cornerstone of our downtown, you know, it's a fixture of our downtown and it's so important to so many people. Um, I have friends who have a very, very long history of the bistro being their, their local and and you being um a mama to them a mama to people whose whose parents may have uh ignored them uh maybe even kicked them out um so so thank you thank you for those years of of service really to to our community and um so then with the shutdown um now, if I remember correctly, you applied for the first round of loans from the federal government, yes? Yes. Um, I, uh, we virtually applied for everything that came up. Um, mm -hmm. The initial ones, I think there was one that was just a lottery type deal. Um, I know a, a couple places here locally did get that, but mm -hmm. we continued to apply um, it's, as you know, a lot of you that had tried to 
get unemployment, how hard it was to get through to on the websites. And there really wasn't anyone that could help you. And um, so we applied for everything and we have not, we have not received anything. And I think mm -hmm. that is the norm for small businesses. Now, right. when, when you hear, um, I think of a small business as, you know, under 25 people, 50 at the most, right. they're considering small businesses up to 500. And I, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you there. And, uh, and I want to just, uh, uh, it, you know, interject um, a comment about, about voting and, and look at, look at who the people were, who were, uh, you know, insisting on these parameters for a, a small business loan for employees up to 500 and, and, and look at the businesses that, that got this money. And, um, and those businesses are not necessarily in need right. the way our small businesses are. Um, so, uh, did did you apply for the uh, McLean County emergency funds? Yes, I I did apply for that, um, and honestly, I have heard nothing. Um, oh, so maybe uh, I I asked a couple people to check into it for me. But what I basically received when that became open was mm -hmm. yes, I'm interested. They sent me. It was kind of like a survey type deal, and okay. I I filled that out, and then nothing. And that's kind oh. of how that State Farm grant or money also mm -hmm. was that we received an email. Yes, you're on the list, and yes, you know whatever. Mm -hmm. But then I, nothing on either one of those. Wow. I talked to a few other bar, not bar owners, but a few other small businesses that mm -hmm. also applied, and we haven't heard anything. So. Hmm. Well, um, so, you know, regarding, regarding your finances, you said you purchased the building. Are yeah. you still paying a mortgage? What kind of expenses do you have to try to keep up with? Right. I, I was, at the time when I uh, opened the bar, I, um, I went ahead and purchased the building. And it, I, it was on a 15-year loan, and I was, worked really hard to get it paid off early. Mm -hmm. If... Uh, you know, and as, as bar business changes over the years, I have been very lucky uh, to be able to keep the bar open because if I had to pay a mortgage, I probably would have had to close years ago. So right. um, for me, um, when we first, this first happened, I thought, well, we'll be closed through April and I can make mm -hmm. it through April and that's, you know, that's not going to be that bad. But as it go goes on, um, I really worry about a lot of small businesses that are yeah. having to pay rent, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I mean, the bills yeah. don't stop coming. You, you have, I, especially when the, in my business, we have dram shop insurance and, um, you know, we have, we still have all our utilities. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's just a constant, um, uh, you know, you're just shuffling things constantly sure. to try to just keep paying what you can. Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't, um, um, did you try to, uh, contact the utilities and take a, like a pay holiday from the utilities? Cause I know that was available to individuals. Right. Um, I contacted, um, all of the utilities and asked what the process was going to be. Right. Basically was told that during this time frame, you know, we're not going to shut off anybody's power or mm -hmm. anything, utilities. Um, but then, uh, I don't know how long that's going to be. So I've been trying to just, you know, pay minimum amounts here and there mm -hmm. to, just to keep sure that I'm, you know, I, nothing gets shut off, but right. You know, it, it is concerning because, uh, you know, so many of my customers, friends, and patrons are, are in the service industry. So when mm -hmm. bars and restaurants closed, they were out of luck. And I know a lot of them had to uh, pay, you, you know, your utilities, but rent um, until they could get in on unemployment. So, mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, you know, speaking of your, your employees, um, I'm sure, I mean, the bar is not open, you know, 
all day every day so none of them are really full time but i'm sure these are important jobs to your employees did your did your size of business qualify for the uh the pay the what is it the pay paycheck protection no. loan it didn't no. it was too no. small and i you know i have been um i have great employees and i'm you know a lot of businesses that are in the service industry have kind of a revolving door of who their employees and who works there Right. Um, I've had, I, I have so, so many great employees and fortunately for me and for them, um, they had, you know, one's a teacher and, you know, a lot of them have, all of them had other jobs that they were mm -hmm. able to continue from home. So that took a lot of um, pressure off of me because I, I knew they were going to be okay. And I right. concentrate on other things. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's see if I had any more questions uh, prepared for you. Uh, right. Oh, right. So, um, you know, going back to the community and um, our love, uh, our collective love of this building, this home, um, this place of family and fun. Um, within the first two weeks of the shutdown, um, somebody who used to live here, who I believe lives in St. Louis, launched um an online fundraiser for you to help you know help yeah, with the expenses I, you know i i have a very hard time asking anyone for help and and uh so i basically was you know stressing out on how i was going to do things and whatever and and uh uh this this person was a customer customer of mine for a long time before he moved actually to chicago Mm -hmm. And he contacted me and said, I'm setting up this GoFundMe. And I'm, I'm like, really? And I said, I can't imagine anybody would want to donate to that. And uh, people did. And mm -hmm. um, since that, we, I've had other customers that we did a virtual happy hour. And this last week, um, they arranged an art auction. And uh, all of that has really... Um, enabled me to at least maintain and um, hopefully um, be open soon. The one thing, of course, that I'm disappointed in, and I know a lot of others, is the canceling of the Pride Festival mm -hmm. um, that would have been in July. Um, so, you know, that's that's part of this. I, I think, you know, my concern is for everyone to stay healthy and be safe and so, uh, you know, we will get through it. it. It's, it takes a village sometimes, but, um, mm -hmm. all of those things that, um, you know, made me realize that, you know, I think this is a great bar, but it, it made me realize that other people think that way too. And, um, mm -hmm. we're very willing and they were so generous and, uh, it, it, it just really, um, uh, it just makes you feel a lot better about everything when you have people that are standing with you, um, beside you in the same, same fight. So, right. Right. Yes. I, I feel the same way. I'm, I'm so, I'm so pleased to see, um, all of the, all of the people doing all of the good things right. to help each other get through this time. Um, so, uh, Apparently, we're, you're going to be able to open tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Did you want to share how that's going to work and if you have recommendations for, for yeah. people who want to come tomorrow at 5 Well, or through the night? Right. <laughs> we have been, Space it out. <laughs> we, we have been really um, working with the city, of course, um, to try to figure out a way uh, through these phases that uh, the governor has outlined for us. And... Um, when he opened up the, the prospect of being able to be outside, um, then we all were trying to figure out how that's going to work. And mm -hmm. um, the city is, is trying to adjust some things, but for us, for tomorrow, we will be open at five. We have a closing time of midnight and uh, we will be in a kind of a, a confined area outside okay. so we will have to be cautious of 
um, you know, kind of social distancing. And I know that uh, we won't all be able to be in that space at the same time. So we're just all going to have to work together. But I'm, I'm hoping to be open uh, both Friday and Saturday night, starting at five. Okay. And then um, next week, we will do the same. And it'll be an early close, I think at 1030 on um, the rest of the week. So but yeah, mm-hmm. just check it out on Facebook. I'm sure Marsha will put it up there. So Okay, great. And so how are you going to how are you going to serve drinks? Are people allowed to come in like one at a time? Or do you have to bring drinks outside? We we will have um, some of our staff will be outside. Uh, I'm afraid that if, you know, when we this all happened, I said, well, you know, how are we going to do all this? And you, you're going to be allowed to come in, at, obviously, and use the restrooms, et cetera. But um, I think that it would be easier to have a staff outside, and then we'll make the drinks, and the staff will take it back out. I want to be as safe as we possibly can. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's what we're going to try anyway for tomorrow. So. Okay. And do you have a do you have a preference? Should people bring cash or or just bring the cards or does it matter it really doesn't matter um you know i we will have we will have both available just like when we're open normally okay the main thing to to remember is that um we we won't all be able to squeeze into a small space and Mm -hmm. that um you know we will be closing earlier i know in the bar business a lot of you uh don't even come downtown till 1130 or 12. So you'll have to do it early. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I look forward to seeing, uh, seeing everybody and hope over the next few weeks until we can be back inside. Um, all of you will have a chance to get down and, and see us all. So. Right, right. Well, I'm so glad you were able to weather this storm and stay in business. And I know that, um, you know, a business like yours or, um, other businesses that are uh, have have uh, either um, you know services that uh, they can't do curbside, like uh, like Specs around town, for instance. You know they can't do they can't do curbside service. So I'm sure I'm sure they've struggled as well. And and I would like the listeners to know that I did uh, I did my best, and uh, team members of mine. Uh, really tried to reach out to businesses all across the 88th district, not just in Bloomington. Um, we tried to talk to people in uh, Mackinac and Morton and Washington. And um, there were a couple of people that sounded like they were interested, but they were unfortunately not available. Um, so I've been very happy to talk to Mama about the bistro, but you know, I acknowledge that a lot of small businesses have been uh, deeply impacted like this and not every business is going to have 30 years worth of um, loyal customers and family who are willing to donate to a GoFundMe to keep that small business open. So I would say a to lot everybody. That will not open. I, I know that there's a lot of businesses I've been hearing across uh, Peoria County, et cetera. Mm-hmm. That- um, some of the businesses like like myself that have been around for a long time are just saying, okay, well, this is the end for us. We're just not going to open back up. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's it's a very scary time. And, you know, we my, my deal has always been to really support local and please mm-hmm. continue to do that. Yes, yes. So as businesses start to open up tomorrow, um, please, everybody, shop local eat local, drink local, but also do so safely. I mean, I definitely want to come over to the bistro tomorrow night. Um, I'm not sure I'll come right at five. I might come a little bit later. Um, and, I, and if it's crowded, I'm probably going to go home and I'll come back another time because I, I live with someone who's immune compromised and I cannot uh, expose myself unnecessarily just because I want to hang out with people, people I love. Uh, But we'll, we'll get, we'll get back there. We'll we'll get back to that time where, when we can be, uh, can really be together again, the way that we 
enjoy. Right. So now I'm going to ask Kelsey if uh, there's any questions, uh, any comments on the Facebook Live, if it looks like anybody's tuning in. So we had um, RJ was here and listening and chatted in. See you tomorrow. We love you, Mama. So RJ is uh, here and echoing your support local mm -hmm. as well. Um, it does look like we do have several people on Facebook Live. So again, just a quick reminder, if you have questions for either Carla or for Mama that you would like um, to have asked live, um, go ahead and comment on that post and we will answer those here in a little while as well. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to talk just a little bit about voting and give people a chance to ask questions or if there's anybody on the Facebook Live who's also a small business owner, you know, go ahead and, and type in a little bit of your experience and we can share that. So my previous town halls were called Why Vote? And um, the people that we elect at all levels of government are the ones deciding who gets what and how much. Our federal government passed the Second CARES Act, which has provided $4.9 billion in funding to the state of Illinois. And um, Kelsey, if you have that, uh, yeah, that Duckworth and Durbin page there, just to, just to, so people can kind of see it in writing, um, how lucky we are to have Senators Durbin and Duckworth fighting for us in the state of Illinois, because it takes senators to work at their level, at the federal government level, um, allocating the funds for our state. And then the next step down, we go to the, uh, the Springfield level, the state legislators, which is what I'm running for. I'm running for state representative. And uh, over this last weekend, our legislators passed some helpful legislation with provisions to help small businesses, such as carry out cocktails. And they also passed a provision allowing vote by mail. And ballots will be automatically sent to people who have voted in the past several elections. And the budget package that was passed can only be balanced if Illinois is able to borrow money from the federal government. There are legislators who would prefer to cut services, but our education, health care, and home and child care services were severely cut and damaged during the last administration. And House Majority Leader Greg Harris stated that he does not want to balance the budget off the backs of people who would lose their jobs if funding were cut to essential services like schools and first responders. Now I know that business owners are unhappy with Pritzker for the shutdown and we've heard firsthand tonight the damage that has been done, but we have to hold on to the understanding of how many lives we have saved by doing this shutdown. People should not be expendable. We are not human capital stock. So let's continue to support and care for one another. And please wear a mask if you are less than six feet away from someone. And uh, Jan, thank you again for joining us tonight. It's been great. Always good to see you. We did have a question. Okay from Mary on Facebook Live. Okay. She said, love you, Mama. How can we best support you right now? <laughs> um, I'll tell you what. I think that um, probably the best thing to do is, um, I mean, obviously come down, but when we basically get back open, um, that's when we really need support um, to keep keep us going to, to kind of build back up our resources because um, we have all really drained whatever, you know, all the, all the small businesses I know have, have really drained all their resources that they had had personally. So um, I think the best thing to do is um, to take care of yourselves and, and take care of your friends and be there to um, help people that, that need help. I know, uh, Carla and I talked about this earlier that um, this is a time where 
um, there's a lot of depression and a lot of anxiety and we need to be there for each other. So um, reach out to people and make sure that they're doing okay. But for, for me, what, uh, you know, uh, just, just having people um, send messages and say they care about me, that, that is helping me get through this. But honestly, when, what would help is just to, to support the bar the, the most that you can once we get back open and that that's all I can ask for. So Great. thank you. Yeah. Are you going to be able to do the carry out cocktails? Um, we, we could, we can do the carry out cocktails. Uh, as far as, um, you know, it really isn't going to make that much difference, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in a small business. Um, that's why I haven't done any curbside or anything like that. I think, mm -hmm. Uh, for a, a bar like mine that is basically just uh, alcohol, doesn't have food, the, the curbside just really isn't going to be much of an addition. So, right. um, I, you know, we can do package if, if asked, but um, I think that we'll just kind of take it slowly. I want people to stay healthy. And um, so we'll take it slow and hopefully that we will be able to be back inside. I think that it will be um, a small percentage of your capacity at first, and then at least slowly we'll be able to be back up. And that's when we all need to see you. So thank right. you for the question. Yeah. Nice. And there and, was a follow up. Okay. Yes. Be there for each other. And then, um, a question regarding your weekly check-ins. Will you continue? To do that? Um, that's been funny because, uh, somebody had just, you know, I, I thought, well, you know, I saw a video of somebody else, talking. I thought, well, I wonder if I can do that. I'm not, I'm technically challenged. So um, I did the first video and it got such a good response. I thought, well, um, maybe I better just check in every week. And so that's kind of how it started. And um, I, I love to, uh, sometimes they're just really hokey, but I mean, the response that I get afterwards always makes my day because people will say, oh, we look forward to it and whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think probably that's something that we will continue. Um, I have a, a, a friend, Marsha, that is working a lot on upgrading our social media and so forth. So um, they're trying to get me up to speed, but I really don't want to know how to do too much of it. So it's <laughs> fine. Um, but yeah, I think I'll probably continue those. Well, I know I've enjoyed them. <laughs> any, any, any more uh, questions or comments, Kelsey? No, there aren't any more. Um, but thank you, everyone, so much for joining us and mm -hmm. watching. And you both did excellent. So, Jan, nice work on your continuing to use technology. So, excellent job tonight on the town hall. Um, these are so important. Thank you so much, Carla, for hosting them. Mm -hmm. Vote, people. That's what we need. Yes. Vote. Yes, we need good people making good decisions for us. We have so many wonderful people running this time. And yes, we do. We, this has made a world of difference to our community to get people involved. And instead of going to the polls and seeing the ballot so one-sided, we, we now have choices. And the people that have stepped up to run, I'm so proud to know a lot of them. So I encourage you to please, please vote. We, uh, we really need, that's, that's how things change and, and you do make a difference to vote. Mm -hmm. So please do it. Right on. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, we're gonna sign off now. Thank you so much. Thank you.